Hello, good evening. You're welcome to Online Healing Crusade. We're so glad to have you again on this um, platform. Let's proceed. We believe the Lord has been blessing you if you have been joining us for some time. And then, this is your first time, then you are welcome. This is God that has um, ordered your steps. This is Online Healing Crusade. And it's every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one, every day crusade that God has sent his servants to preach the undiluted word of God. To preach and to teach. Yes, to preach and then to teach. And I believe if probably you are just, you don't know whether there is any God or is there God. Or I know God. I'm a believer. Or I'm just a church girl. I don't think I knew Jesus uh, intimately. This program is for you. That's why exactly God brought you here. You are going to hear the most, about to hear the most important words that will change your total mind. And you will know that there is a God that cares and is searching for you to come to him, to know him. He's the one that has created you. He wants to be your father if you have not had him as your father. And if you are a believer, you are about to hear words that will bring healing to your total mind. Hallelujah. Join me tonight to welcome the servants of the Lord. Evangelist Lui Ulufemi Gundari as he brings the word of life unto us again. Healing for the total man. God bless you and stay connected. Praise God. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life. It's always a great privilege anytime we bring the word of life to you. Uh, the supernatural presence and power of God is reaching you through this channel and the word of God is coming to you live in the name of Jesus. Uh, it's online healing crusade and the power of God will touch you wherever you are hearing from in Jesus' name. Um, tonight, I want to minister on channels of God's healing power into your physical body. Channels of His power your physical God. Healing generally is the restoration of diseased part of the body to its normal condition. Healing power is a real substance, but this power can be passed through different channels. Number one, the name of Jesus. If a pain comes to you, and you say, in the name of Jesus, leave my body. The pain must go. While you are the master of your own body, and you use the word of your mouth to rule your body. Your spirit man is superior to your soul, and it's your soul is superior to your body. But you are a tripartite being, three in one, spirit, soul, body. The Bible says, I wish that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the uh, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It talks of your spirit, your soul, and your body. Out of the three, the most important aspect is your spirit when it comes to spiritual things. Your mind is um, the, the, the five realms of the senses. It talks the sense of feeling, the sense of touch, the sense of taste and the ten sense of smell, okay? All these are different channels through which you hear and you assess what is happening around you in the physical realm. We are all spiritual beings because we are created after the image of God and God is a spirit. The Bible says in John chapter 4 verse 24, said Jesus, uh, the Lord is a spirit and they that worship him a spirit must worship him a spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. And when he created us, he created us in his own image. So that we are also spirit beings, just like he's a spirit being. When he wants to communicate with us, he communicates with us through our spirit. So our spirit is the most important aspect of our being. And whatever sickness is or infirmity people have in their body, when God wants to minister to them, he will minister to them through their spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you speak forth from inside of your spirit and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, you sickness, leave my body. The sickness leave because you have ordered that prayer in his name, not in your name. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? And there is so much power in the name of Jesus. Jesus, God the Father, has given all authority concerning all things on the earth. Has given it to Jesus that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. So he, he, he gave authority to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like uh, if we use this physical illustration, maybe to your health. <laughs> Joseph, when he got to Egypt, and uh, Pharaoh wanted to put him in the service of the kingdom to rule over Egypt. You get more than I say. He, he said, only in this throne am I greater than you. But the authority to rule the kingdom, I put it in the hand of Joseph. And uh, the Bible said that he even removed his ring, the ring of authority, and gave it to the hand of Joseph, so that as a seal of the government, whatsoever Joseph seal will be sealed. And he made every other person to bow down for, for, for Joseph. So that everybody should bow for Joseph. So in the realm of the spirit, God did the same for Jesus. He said, all authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth has been given to Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, whether it's of things in heaven, or things on earth, or things under the earth, or beings in heaven, beings on the earth, and beings that are under the earth. That talks of uh, three realms in the spiritual realm. Uh, in the presence of God and in hell, hear this, where dead souls are, and also here in this world, the name of Jesus works in all the three realms. You understand what I'm saying? So when we pray in that name, we get answer to our prayers, all right? And uh, any time you want to pray, Jesus Christ said, if you want to ask anything of the Father, ask the Father in my name, and the Father will get it done for you. Once you use my name. He also said that whatever prayers we pray in his name or request that we make in his name, he himself will ensure that it is done. These are authority things that God has given to us through the name of Jesus. When you want to cast out a demon, you don't do it in your name. You don't do it in your name in the name of your geo, General Vasia. You cast out the devil in the name of Jesus. You don't even say in the name of Jehovah. You say in the name of Jesus, because God has put all that is in his um, authority and power, he has put them inside the name of Jesus. So that's why anytime we want to cast out devil, we cast out devil in the name of Jesus. That's very important. That's the legal tender. That's the name that is recognized in heaven and earth and in hell. So one of the equipment for your healing or channels through which you can be healed is for you to use the name of Jesus at any time. Even if you have a, a very serious situation, in a case where you have a very bad dream and you have slept and then you now have this dream and all that, even inside the dream where you are not so conscious, if you can shout, Jesus! Whatsoever hold you down will leave you, even in your sleep. Talk less of where you physically have the situation. I get what I'm saying. Because whether in this realm or in the other realm, that name is superior to any other name. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are three ways by which a person can have a great name in this world. There are people that are born into a great name, like people who are kings, you know. Uh, presently, the whole world, they are celebrating maybe 70th year of the reign of Queen Elizabeth all across the nations of the world. Now that's somebody ruling on, uh, as an authority over a kingdom. Are you getting what I'm saying? They call it United Kingdom. And they have other people that are commonwealth of nations that are still under United Kingdom. Uh, the powers is not as seriously powerful as it used to be now, but then they still have some, you know, authority over some nations. But what I want to bring out is the fact that if a person is born into that family of the king of England, what 
accrue to that person. It's not the same person. It's not the same thing as somebody who's born as a pauper on the street. And you hear what I'm saying? That's to be born into a great name. If you say you are the daughter of the kings or king of so-so place, that means you are a princess or you are a prince. You understand what I'm saying? You are born by a king or a queen. It means you are prince or princess. So there are royal things that will accrue to you as a result of the fact that you are born from that family. So some are born into a great name. So if you are born into that family, you are not like any other person in the same kingdom. So also you have wherever kings are still ruling today. Maybe in some Arab countries, the person that is in charge of United Arab Emirates, if he dies as a king, he puts his son there and the son continues to reign. Some don't even wait when they die. When they know they're already getting old and they can't function well, they put their sons there. Are you getting what I'm saying? So a man that is born into the family of a king like that, is not like any other person. Well, all the wealth of that family and all the you know, liability and the, and the assets of the whole kingdom will rest on his shoulders. Are you getting what I'm saying? I think one of those days that I traveled to Qatar, I saw, I could, at a close range, I could see their king. You understand what I'm saying? The one that's running there. Very tall, like a giant, and all that. But whatever is the weight of that whole nation, he's in charge. Okay, so he was born into it, not that he worked for it. So people have a great name if they are born into it. Now, Jesus had a great name like that because he was born to be the son of the living God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So whatever God has as the creator of the universe, the creator of the ends of the earth, the God of all flesh, the one that ruled over the affairs of men on earth, the one that is the king of all angels, are you getting what I'm saying? Whatever authority God the Father has, he has bestowed it on Jesus. He was born as a son of a king. With God the Father be that king, and Jesus Christ be the only son of that king, wow, whatever God has, Jesus have them. Whatever is under the authority of God, and of course there's nothing that is at any other uh, level of authority that is superior to that of God, Jesus Christ become the inheritor of all the things that God has or created. That's a great name is God there. Because if you say you are a prince, I will ask you prince of what kingdom, under what king, so somebody can call himself a king of a particular village or king of a particular town, very small town. And uh, though he carry the title of a king, but if you now dissect it properly, you now know that the king is talking about is just over a small place of 25 buildings. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the level of your kingship or the level of your princeship will de be determined by what is the extent of the authority and power that the king or the kingdom where you are ruling over that it has that will determine your power but when you now talk of jesus christ all the powers that belongs to god all the authority that belong to god all the wealth of this world that is in the hand of god is under the authority of the name of jesus because that's his father's property and you get what i'm saying so that's why the name of jesus is great Number two, you get a great name by your own achievement. What you have achieved in life can give you a great name. Even if you are not born great, you can become great by your achievement. Let's begin to take it. If somebody is born ordinary, but he now went to school, and he has first degree, second degree, third degree, and then stayed in the university to become a lecturer and has become so high in the field of he so has studies. He ends up becoming a professor. Now that is not a title that you are dashed. Somebody just throw at you. You work for it. And you get what I'm saying? If somebody has been fighting from local level in his town, from his town to the city, from the city to the state, from the state to the whole region, and then from that region becomes national when they are now fighting in boxing at national level, he now won the final belt of championship for the whole country. 
So you become the national champion in either wrestling or in boxing or in football or whatever. Are you getting things? Or lawn tennis or table tennis or anything, sports, entertainment and all that. So he worked for that thing because he, mm -hmm. he had risen from small level to a higher level based on his ability and his skill. You understand me? Then he now moved from that place, you have things like intercontinental. The continent of Africa has to slug it out with the continent of America, and the Americans has to slug it out with that of Europe, and the Europe struggles it out with that of Australia, and then the Oceania, and all things like that. Fine. By the time they are all through, somebody now becomes a world champion, either in boxing, in wrestling, or in football, and whatever entertainment they say, they, this is the best person in the whole world. Now, he worked for that title. Are you getting So, if you say this one is the uh, heavyweight champion in wrestling, heavyweight champion in, in boxing, world champion in football, world champion in uh, whatever, he has worked for it. So, if he had now given back to children and they are saying all he has achieved due to his achievement, Sorry, the achievement of the dad cannot be given to the children. If the children want to walk in that same realm, they too have to go and achieve what their father achieved. What do I mean by that? You can't give your title of medical doctor to your son. Your son has to go to school. You can't give the title of a lawyer to your son. Your son has to go to school and acquire the same thing you acquire. He may have the advantage of using your books and using your office or using your um, uh, medical lab or whatever you have achieved through all those processes, you may have access to that. But it can automatically become it if it didn't work for it. So Jesus Christ was not just great because he's the son of God by birth. And God is great, so his son will definitely be great based on the kingdom that his father covers. You understand what I'm saying? But he also became great because by achievement he conquered the devil. He came from heaven, he descended to live among men, and he rose through the rank like that until he got to a point that was not just a little baby that you have to carry him to Egypt when the devil was harassing him, onto the level that he has to confront the devil by himself, confront kings, confront different people, and then died a shameful death on the cross of Calvary to so get a permission to be able to enter into hell so he can go and meet the devil at the headquarters of the devil and then fight him and win him and take back the authority that. Uh, uh, the devil has taken from Adam and Eve in the garden. He took that authority back. The Bible now says, all power. When he came out of that, he said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. That in my name, you can go out now and cast out devil and all that. Why is he doing that? Why is he saying that? He had acquired that as a result of his own achievement. He, co he actually conquered the devil. You understand? He conquered the devil. And if somebody conquered the devil, uh, the devil that has been king over the whole world and all that, and has been ruling and ruling over the entire universe, as soon as um, he conquered, he had that power, grace, and glory. And the devil knows that Jesus conquered him. So there's no way the devil anywhere, when we mention the name of Jesus, he knew that, oh, that's the man that conquered me, that came to hell and conquered me. Bible says if they have known, they will not have crucified the Lord of glory. You understand me? So, but they didn't know. They thought that arresting Jesus Christ and then making him to be crucified would be the end of the whole show. No, it was just the beginning. He told us, said, a corn of wheat has to fall to the ground and die before he can reproduce others. So he fell to the ground and died and reproduced himself in us. So whatever he started doing at that time, that we use his name to achieve, we can also do the same in his name now. I mean, duplicating and uh, replicating him, you understand? So that's second level of what makes the name of Jesus to be great. So anytime you do Jesus' name, you know what you are saying and how great and powerful the name is, both in heaven and hell and on earth. And then number three way by which the name, your, your name can be great, you know, is the fact that you can have great name by confirming this thing is conferred on you. You didn't work for it, you didn't achieve it, you were not born into it. But people who are in authority that carries the power, they call you and say, because of whatever, whatever you have done among humanity, you want to confer this title on you. Honorary, they call it, they call it honorary degree. We just honor you with this, right? Jesus Christ had that kind of authority also based on uh, honorary bestowal. It was bestowed upon him. 
Okay? Uh, the Bible says in heaven there was a name that was reserved. For whosoever the Father wants that he can give that name to, it was reserved. After Jesus has conquered on earth and he has conquered in hell and has uh, came back to heaven, ascended to heaven and he sat down at the right hand of God the Father, God conferred a title on him, the name of Jesus, that at his name every name will bow. A name that has been hidden that nobody knew what God wanted to use it for. And God, when he finally knew that his son had done all that, he now gave that name. He conferred that title and authority to him. All angels know that the name of Jesus is superior to theirs. And all heaven, all hell knows that the name of Jesus is superior. I remember somebody wanted to cast out the devil, as it's recorded in the Bible, in the book of Acts of the Apostles. And um, some people saw him, and uh, they, they came, seven sons of Scripture. And they said, we cast you out, devil, in the name of Jesus, which Paul preached. And the demon looked at them. You want to cast me out using the name of Jesus that Paul used to preach. You have mentioned two names. Two names. You mentioned the name of Jesus. Ah, Jesus, I know. You mentioned the name of Paul. Paul, I know. But who are you? Many of that is the name you mentioned, the name of Jesus is a great name. None of us demons will hear that name that we not respect. So we know who Jesus is, what he has done to our superior called the devil, Satan. That old serpent, the dragon, we knew what Jesus did to him. So when we hear that name, whatever we are doing, we surrender. We know it's a name greater than us. And you also mentioned another name, Paul. Yes, we know Paul is one of his followers that worked with him powerfully and um, he also operated in that same power when he mentioned the name and we hear it coming from his mouth we must respect him for what he has done in the realm of the spirit but you then you are using these two names we don't know you who are you so that means the the demons cause check to the person that is trying to cast them out they found out that the blood of jesus was not on him he does not have the mark of being born again. He's not a member of the kingdom of God. He's not a member of the commonwealth of Israel. He's not a member of Zion, the city of the living God. He doesn't have any logo or identity of anything related to Jesus or to the kingdom that Jesus lived, which is Christianity. Christian. He has no relationship with Christ. So why is he coming to cast me out? So the demon became annoyed and enraged. And then they fought those seven guys and rendered them naked, beat them thoroughly, <laughs> and cast them out of that place. Now the Bible says he has given us authority to cast out devils in his name. But on the other hand, it was devils that cast out this young man, young men, seven of them. Why? Why Jesus was on earth, their forefathers, Skepha, was around. Because they said their father is a high priest, but he didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't follow the example of Jesus. Rather, they are the ones that signed the bill that said that Jesus must be crucified. They are the one that arrested him and gave him over to Pontius Pilate to condemn him for judgment. They are the one that say, no, he must die. Crucify him. Yes, crucify him. Yes, crucify him. The father of this Kepha was one of those in authority who was doing that against Jesus. So they didn't recognize that name. They are not a member of the kingdom where that name is being used. They talked of Paul. Paul was not even there when, there when Jesus Christ was using authority all across the earth. He was not even one of the twelve. He was not one of the seventy. But after Jesus died, he got born again. And then he became included and inclusive in the kingdom where we have a right to use the name of Jesus. So he too started using the name both among Jews and Gentiles, and the name was working for him. Through the name, he cast out a lot of demons. Through the name, he even raised the dead. Through that name, he 
minister to a lame man, the lame man was walking. Till the number of wonderful things. He got to an island, minister to the king of the island, and the whole island were shocked. Wow. Who is this that by just touching somebody with malaria fever, the person became okay immediately? Oh, wow. They just brought every sick person around and he was praying for them. They were getting healed. Wow. He was ministering in some way and then they see the way that a lame man walked who had never won from bath, never walked, and he started walking. He said, wow. In fact, they said, this must be a God. They want to worship him. He said, no, I'm a human being like you. I'm only using the name of Jesus. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they knew who Paul was. They knew who Jesus was. And they will know who Peter was. So there are names that are known in heaven and are known in hell. Known by angels and known by demons. Those who walk with the name of Jesus. Those who are members of the family of Jesus. Those who operate with the authority that Jesus has given to us to operate in his name. They are known in heaven. When they need them to pray, heaven will say, what are you asking for in the name of Jesus, please? When they shout and command in the name of Jesus, demons know, hey, they've mentioned that name again, we've got to release this guy. Those who are praying over there are mentioning the name of Jesus, the Holy One. You better release this guy. That means he belongs to them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that name is so powerful that uh, when the apostles used the name, we saw the result. Uh, Peter got to the beautiful gate, and in the name of Jesus, he has a lame man who has been born lame, who never had walked, to so stand up and walk, and the man stood up. In the name of Jesus. The man asked for money, actually. Can I get some coins there, please? God bless you. Can you bless me with some money? I get something to chop, to eat. And Peter said, silver and gold you are asking for. We don't have that one. But we have something else that can be of help to you. At the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command you, rise up and walk. And the man, he grabbed the hand of the man and lifted him up. And the man started walk. Wow. Then the whole body of people that are around outside of the um, beautiful gate, the church, the temple that they were about to enter for service. And people inside the church and the service all came out to come and see a wonderful thing that had just happened at the entrance of their church. People have just passed that place now. This morning before they enter into church, they saw him there, those who like and drop coins for him. But now that they had that, the one you drop coins for the other the other minutes, a few minutes ago, somebody didn't drop coin, he has dropped the anointing. And while dropping the anointing, he shouted the name of a woman called Jesus. And the lame man is now walking. Wow. So the, 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 the walking of the power of God in the life of Peter became so great that uh, when he's passing by and people are sick, they come and bring the sick people to just be gathered on the road. If I had went to the shadow of Peter, we touch them. And as many as are touched by that shadow, they will stand up and they are healed. How will demons know so they know the name of that person? So the name of Jesus, they knew. The name of Paul, they knew. The name of Peter, they surely will know. And all other people that are walking, they cannot say they don't need the name of Stephen. The Bible says Stephen walking so much miracle signs and wonders for the short time that he lived. They can't say they don't need the name of Philip, the Philip that entered into Samaria. And all the people that are there started coming to him. He started praying for them, getting them saved, getting them healed. And called with attention to Jerusalem. Jerusalem sent Peter and John to come there and getting there. They ministered the Ghost Baptist and people who are baptized in the Holy Ghost. The joy was all over the town, the city of Samaria. Demons are crying out. Lame are walking. Sick people are being healed. The devil cannot say he doesn't know the name of Philip. But they know the name, not that the name is what cast them out. The, those names became popular because of the way they have used the name of Jesus. So you too can become great by the way you use and employ the name of Jesus. Your rapport with the name of Jesus, because that name is actually, is, is, Jesus Christ was raised up for the rising and for the falling of many in Israel. So the name of Jesus can be your lifter. The name of Jesus can be the reason why you are known worldwide. I've been following this Jesus over the years. I, I got born again in secondary school. Are you get what I'm saying? Maybe some 50 or, or, or 
maybe 40 something years ago, not up to 50, but 40 something years ago. Are you getting what I'm saying? I got born again in secondary school. I came to University of FIFA many years ago in my country, Nigeria. I got to consecrate my life unto God, follow the way of Christian fellowships, got into their leadership, became president of a fellowship on campus. And from that time till now, I never worked for any other soul to collect salary. I've been a full-time preacher for many years. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I've worked with this name so well, my brother. There's something about the name that is not ordinary. Whatever I have become today, it was through this name, employing the name of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I've seen lame that God has healed, if I've seen people on wish here or whatever, that God had made to stand up, if I've seen people that had crane or what they call it, a walking stick that they drop and walk off, if I've seen people that are totally blind and uh, had two eyes given back to them, if I've seen people that are you know, deaf, couldn't hear, and for years, maybe 12 years, and they are totally healed, they could hear within two years. Are you hearing hear what I'm saying? Those that have partial blindness or partial deafness, and they have been healed. If I've seen all this, I've seen the dead come back alive. It's only through this name. So I can't say I don't know the name. If demons have answered to the name, when we mention the name of Jesus and demons left people, they roll on the gland, scream, and they got, got up. If I've seen people that are having epileptic spirit, foaming in the mouth, rolling on the ground and all that, stood up at the name of Jesus and became free forever. So I've seen mad person that mentally derailed, and the Lord restored them back to normal life as if nothing ever happened to them. Boy, there's something about this name. There's something about this name. And the more you, you walk with this name, the more you, the, the life of God in you becomes so strong and powerful. You understand? I've seen people at the verge of death come back from the region of death to the region of life. I've seen people that you have, they said, no, 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 surgery, surgery. Quickly, you have to, I hope you have not eaten because we want to take you to the theater for surgery. And the surgery was terminated. It doesn't need it again after prayer has been offered. Both within the country, Nigeria, and outside Nigeria, I've seen people slated for surgery like this. And I was brought, the pastor of the, of the church in Canada took me into the place where to pray for this person in a place that you can call our ICU here, intensive care unit. Because it was under oxygen, wired, a lot of things were wired to his body, and then you see some movement of uh, maybe the breathing or whatever. And people were already dressed in green, green, ready to do operation or whatever they wanted to do. But they allowed us to pray anyway, and we prayed. And they said blood was already moving to the head, and it's already affecting some parts, so they want to do surgery in that area. You know, it's not going to be a small thing. But well, experts are there, they are ready to do it. But my brother and my sister, by the time I came back from US to Canada and I saw this same woman, or when they said she would come and give testimony, I was excited. Oh, that means their surgery must have been successful, thank God. But when she was giving the testimony, I was shocked as you are shocked. The pastor was the one that was corroborating what she was saying. He said, when the man of God prayed, they didn't need to do the surgery again. Whatever they want to go and do with the head, where blood has run to, the blood has run back away from the place. The person is already healed. I think it's a Zimbabwean woman. Are you getting what I'm saying? God is doing us something, but it's all at the name of Jesus. Nobody can heal an ant. Nobody can heal a cockroach anywhere. If you do not have this name working for you, there's nothing you can do to help humanity. A man cannot help another man. It is the power of God in us that gets the job done. And nobody has a name that the name is so great on earth that you now pray in his name. In the name of so so person and God will answer you. No, you have to use the name of Jesus. So today I pray that whatever is it that is ailing you, a problem you have in your body, I want to pray for you using the name of Jesus. But all you have had is not just for you to have faith in my prayer today. It's for you to be able to use that name yourself. And if you've been using that name in vain, anything happened, Jesus, anything happened, Jesus, you better stop that. So that when you use the name of Jesus for something serious, it will come out of your mouth with power. So don't just, that's why the Bible says, neither should you call the name of the Lord God in vain. 
Don't just call the name anyhow for anything. Because there will be a day that you are desperately in need of solution to a problem. And you will mention that name. And the mention of that name will mean a lot in the realm of the spirit. But if the name has been such a common name, you, you, you just used to talk to your friend anyhow. Are you getting what I'm saying? It will not carry the weight it's supposed to carry. Or if you don't have enough knowledge, like what I just mentioned to you today, first level, second level, third level, different three levels at which great name can come. And Jesus has all the three. Somebody can have a great name with only one of the above and doesn't have the remaining two. But Jesus Christ had all the three areas where a man can get a great name. He got his own name very great. So when we use the name, it affects things on earth in heaven and in hell. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, well, thank you, Jesus. There's somebody having a teeth problem. At the right side of your cheek, the teeth that is on that side, you have about two, no, three, no, four of those teeth that are affected. And um, you are being slated for surgery because of those teeth. But you just place your hand there. I don't know why God is bringing your case now. Just place your hand there. You will need to go through that surgery in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, a command, the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of sickness, disease, and infirmity that is supervising this teeth problem that this man has had. And they have, the thing is so bad, you are feeling so much of excruciating pain that you, you prefer them to do anything they will do, whether surgery or anything, but so that you can have relief because it's so painful. But right now, as you place your hand there, <laughs> I ask that the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ I've mentioned today, let that virtue that comes flows from Jesus, touch that teeth, fall off the teeth. And bring healing and sweetness, pain, leave. Demon of infirmity, leave. Then the pain and ache, leave. And the teeth be restored perfectly in the name of Jesus. Let Dr. Jesus do the surgery now. He said, I am the Lord that healed thee. He is your physician. May he replace those four teeth and set it back in order that without anybody doing you surgery, the surgery they want to do for you, the Lord will do it right now in the name of Jesus. And not only that, the pain you have gone through through normal human surgery, you won't need it now because Jesus mentioned your state in your case so specially this day in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ali kedo koma nine kusu palatwa. This one is wonderful. There is somebody that um, the eyes that is in your right eyes is not human eyes. You have gone through a surgery and so they replace that right eye with another eye. So it's just like a ball. There's something to represent eyes there. Today, God said he will remove that one and give your own original eyes in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Master. Wow. Isotele keno kobi le kuta manasi. I somebody that you are on a death bed, not just a sick bed. Something has affected your liver, and there is no way they can help you now. You are swollen up. Your stomach is bloated up. Your body is big. And the doctors have told you they can't help you further because there's no way to remove that liver and help you any longer. So you are just there waiting for death. Your family is by your side. But this word of God is coming unto you now. God said he's going to give you a surgery, removing that liver and giving you another liver right now. Whether it is liver sclerosis, I don't know what they call it, but I know it's a liver that is affected. But as the way you are is that your stomach is bloated up. Every other thing, most part of your body are big, as if somebody has inflated you. But it's that liver that is the cause of all that. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the healing virtue of God rest on you right now. And that liver removed, a new one substituted in the name of Jesus. 
It's also somebody that um, you have. Thank you, Jesus. I have I don't know the name of the sickness, but I can see you on the bed with inability to urinate properly. And so there is something that they attach to your bladder, not even to your urinary tract, but to your bladder. Ah, but Lord, they don't want to heal you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for that healing virtue of God Almighty, through the name of Jesus, the only name that can heal a man. Get into this hospital, touch this man, heal that bladder, and heal all the urinary tract, tract and restore some health in the name of Jesus. You never expected you'd be able to come out of this. You've been on that bed for months since around the beginning of this year. But today, you are rising up in the name of Jesus. Father, touch this man, Lord. Heal him from head to toe. Restore him in the name of Jesus. Kepona is a deadly Kepiabarata. You will know that you are healed because you couldn't pass urine through your normal you retra what or through the normal tract that you're supposed to pass during through before but today not tomorrow that thing will open up and then you, it will just go through and you'll be able to urinate without any pain in the name of jesus dr jesus i just visited you thank you heavenly father father i bow down my head i return the glory to you in the name of Jesus. You are the source of all power. All power belongs to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Master of the universe. May your name be glorified forever. May your name be glorified forever. May your name be glorified forever. Your name is still as powerful as it has ever been. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus, for granting us your name to use. Thank you, Lord. Oh, be exalted, Master. Thank you, Lord. May no man give us any glory for what we can't do. We can't do anything by our name. But at the name of Jesus, may the glory be yours forever. Thank you, Father. And let the testimony be abounding and the life of people rejoice and their families be happy for what God has done for them today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Until tomorrow, be healthy. Well, the strong. God bless you.